welcome back to Event 3 on the FTOG server. In the last episode, we done a few odds and bods and had a blast celebrating my 100th subscriber. And I don't know if I mentioned the last one, but you guys are awesome. Thank you for, for subscribing. And if you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button. What I thought we'd do in this episode is I said in the last episode I was going to start moving things up to the, the beanstalk here. And I have kind of started doing that, but I've run into a couple of technical challenges. So I thought we'd look into how to fix these. So let's get started. So problems we actually had is number one, we've got a lot of power coming in down here at the old shack. Uh, which goes into capacitor uh, into a capacitor bank, um, and then of course it's routed to various machines here. But getting it up to the beanstalk could be an issue without running some really ugly cables all the way up. Now, when I'm recording this, I've just added immersive engineering into the pack, which is awesome. But I still don't think the cables look great going up there. And the other issue we've got is that we have our storage system down in the shack and it won't let us move the storage core we have to take everything out and then break it and move it to a new location. So I thought in this episode we'd take a look at a interesting mo um, device it's been around for a while but other mods have been more well used for it but I've always liked this one so I'm going to start working on it. And that is the dimensional transceiver. Now the dimensional transceiver is reasonably easy to make. It just requires a little bit of going around collecting resources. You've got an octaic, octaic crystal, uh, capacitor. Um, we've got some fused grass, uh, electrical steel, ender resonator, which requires a slice and splice, and some other fancy stuff. Nothing majorly different here from other packs. Um, the slice and splice. Slice, uh, this one here, uh, just to requ require some machine chassis, some shears, an iron axe, and some sorium, and a any form of skull. So not too difficult either. Uh, and the ender crystal, which is probably the most hardest thing here, requires a soul vial with an ender mineral. Not too difficult, we've got a mob farm. I can grab it from that. Um, it requires a vibrant crystal, which is just some um, alloy nuggets around a emerald. Uh, nuggets, of course, come from vibrant alloy, uh, which is just made by making energetic alloy and ender pearl. So not too difficult either. However, the hardest part here is the soul binder, uh, which would be this guy here, and it requires some heads. Um, I'm sure I can get this from the mob farm, but I don't think we've got all, I don't think we've got that many heads available. So, what we're going to have to make first is the ender. Which is just a dark steel on a stick. Uh, is it going to work? Oh, there we go. And that's pretty much it. Now we can charge, can we charge this? I can't remember if we can charge it up. No, actually, it's the power that we charge. It's fine. I don't think we actually need it because it says here it increases skull and ender pill drops. We just need the skull. I'm going to go kill some um, mobs at the farm and see if we can get some heads. Um, and I'll be back once that's done. Okay, so a nice little haul there. So let's make this guy here. Actually, no, we have to make this guy first, don't we? So let's put him in there. Uh, I think I'm missing a capacitor. I am missing a capacitor. Make the capacitor first, like that. One capacitor, pop that into there. We then make this guy here, like that. And there is the machine chassis. And then we'll make this guy. One soul binder. Now we also need to make, what was it we're making? We're making the Dimensional transceiver, that is for this thing here. We need a soul vial with an ender in it. Um, okay, I need some fused quartz. 
Okay, so th <laughs> need some near the quartz. Oops. Uh, uh, so we'll grab some quartz. Uh, Nineteen. Yep, we should have enough for there. Cool. Okay, my internet's doing something really weird, so I'm going to actually stop recording now. I'll come back to it later, um, which hopefully for you will be for a few seconds. Um, so I will see you then. Okay, so we're back from the internet of the diff, and it looks like the fused quartz has finished, so we can take that out. Hopefully we can bring this guy up much better. Um, so we've already got the soul binder, we were making the... So while that way, that's gonna work. One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> uh, fuse. Fused. One, two, three, and then so one of those. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll grab a Enderman for that. Uh, we also need to make a... So we've got this guy. Vibrant Crystal, which we'll need to make as well. Wait, do I have any Vibrant Alloy? I do. So we make nine of those. And we surround that around there. With a Emerald. Makes us one of those crystals, and that gives us enough to make this, I believe. Lump of crystal plus salt, the salt oil. Yes, we also need to make the in you know, this guy here, the slice and splice. So we'll make that now. Uh, do we have enough for that? Apparently not. Okay, so I need to make some more. I must have used one of those. Uh, it's not a hard recipe, but a soul sand and a gold ingot. So, so, uh oh, sand. Oh, okay. I need to go get some salt sand. Give me a second, and I'll do that. So, nice and easy. Off. Uh, some gold, and we'll put that up to here. Gold and self sand. And whilst we wait for that, what else do we need? So that was for the slice and splice. I think we need to make one of these, don't we? And then we just need to wait for the rest of those to be done. Which they should be, looks like they're done now. Yep. Uh, so while I was off, I grabbed the Enderman Soul Vial as well. Stick that on there. And we make the Slice and Splice. Gives us the Slice and Splice. So that should give us all of the machines we need initially. Um, let's stick. Now, of course, this is all temporary. Um, to the point where it's, I'm going to remove, remove it all, probably in this episode. Uh, so we'll stick that guy there, because it doesn't need power. Now the power in there, and one there. Okay, so. We we'll place that into there, and the Enderman Soul into there. And we need four experience. Use in my experience. Oh, that's new. That's very cool. Haha, <laughs> I like it. Last time I used this, I didn't do that funny yet. Oh, that cool animation. Um, and on top of that, we need to. We're now going to have to make. Uh, solarium with. 
an X and some shears, some silicone. So I'll make another iron X. And some sticks. Are those. Um, go back to the iron. Oh, we just did that way. <laughs> Get shears. Silicone. Uh, and it was solarium and an enderman head. So head, those, soul, and that, oh, and so vibrant, vibrant. Okay, so we'll pop that in here. Yep, one, two. And then that's that there. Oh, it doesn't only takes in the same places. Cool. Uh, we need the silicone and the vibrant in the middle. Okay. And that gives us one resonator. So if we now go into here, we should have everything we need to make one of these. Uh, we do. Oh, actually, no, we don't. We need some fused quartz. Fused. Yeah, okay, I need some more quartz. There's not going to be enough of that. I'm going to need another. I'm going to go need. Uh, going to get some more quartz and make some of these up, and we should be ready to go. So I'll be back in a moment, and then that should give us everything we need to make that. We'll put them in the middle, and one dimensional transceiver. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to create another one, because these things do work in pairs or more. Um, and I'll be back once that's made. Okay, so, I now have three of them. Um, now the reason I've done three is because I want to show it off a little bit, and having two is a bit of a pain. Um, so what we're going to do first is we'll place one of these on there, so it gets power. And as you can see, when it's got power... The inner of it, inside of it actually turns into a greeny colour thing. Um, go in here, you can see that there's a local buffer and there's a send and receive buffer. Now the local buffer will store and keep this running. It will not run without power, which is one of its limitations, but not a bad one. And then you'll see once it's got enough power, it'll then work on the send and receive buffer. You also have send and receive um, buffers of items. Uh, you can configure it like most things you can uh, that you can do. Um, um, and we've got various different um, frequencies. Uh, in our case, we're just going to use private channels. This is a public channel for some reason. Don't know whose that is. Um, and of course, we've got items and we've got power and I think that's liquid. It doesn't tell you. It's only problem with one of the things I don't like about this. Um, so we've got that one there, and what we'll, set, what we'll do first is set it up as power. So we'll make it a private channel, and we'll go NZ hook jacks place. Add the channel, and then we set it to the send side. Right? You can have multiple different things sending on the same receiver, and it will send it to all of them in order. And the same will receive. But I'll show you how that works in a second. So we're sending that now. And what I also want to do is down here. I want to take out this guy. Take that guy out. And we'll stick him on top of Actually, no, we won't. Like that. We need to make one last thing um, from easy storage. And it is... 
the ejection port, which requires an input port, which is a whole bunch of things. Do we have any of that stuff? Okay, so there's the ejection port. Now what we'll do with that is stick it on here. Um, need to grab my wrench. So hopefully we won't need the power of that there anymore. Oh. Take that off. And... Oh, actually... Ooh. Now that could be quite nice. Let's do that instead. So I'll grab that guy. Uh, can I reach him? I can. Can't pick him up though. That's not helpful. <laughs> Take him off. I just can't pick him up. Stick him into here because there's power here, so we might as well use that power. Uh, which one is it? This one, because it's configured. We will stick it there. Now, with this ejection port, it automatically, I've only seemed to be able to get it to point up. Um, and we'll also set it to pull. Go into here and we'll go NZ hook is a store one and make it a private channel, add to there and we'll set the send. And as you can see, it's now taking items out of the storage and sticking into the buffer here. If I now go upstairs somewhere, let's actually, while I'm here. Go downstairs here, and I'll start taking out these guys. Uh, so, take this one for now, and we will put the storage core here, and we'll put the condensed storage box next to it for now. I'll probably rearrange this later on, and so that should give us the ability to stick things in there. So we can do that. Yes, we only got 4,000, but we can move things as we go. And of course, we grab this guy, stick it there, and we can go into here. And you'll notice it doesn't have any local buffer. That's because I'm not connected to any power. So we need to actually, even though we're not using power here, we do need to receive the power. And now you see that the local buffer fills up, and the light in the middle changes. Uh, but we also want to set it to receive. Like that and you see it's now pulling items in um, what we didn't do which is a pain uh, we need to make an input port another one so I'll just go make one of those and I'll be back in a second okay so one input port um, much more harder when you don't actually have storage space available uh, and I'm going up the wrong way again let's go up this way Go into here, uh, and we're going up to here. So we need to place this. It doesn't really matter where we place it in this case, probably just stick it there, maybe. Although I might take out that and stick it there. And then, of course, we can set the down position to push. And you'll now see it's ejecting this stuff out of there. We go into here. It is now moving the stuff from downstairs up to here. Now, of course, as we get closer and closer to the 4000 limit, which we currently have, um, we'll have to move some of the cores. But at least we don't have to move every item individually. Now, the other thing we can do, of course, is I've got the other one here. And which of these actually need power? I know those so I've wrenched the table needs power, so we'll put this on here for now. And if we were to go under here um, and we can say power um, receive. Oh no, that's not ours. Receive power. Um, that'll instantly take power from there and plug it into the enrichment chamber, hopefully. Yes we are, there we go, power. So that's nice and easy to do. But of course, 
you don't have to have, as I said, you don't have to have the um, power coming from one place. We could say have multiple power locations. Like we could add this one here, whoever this is. I could steal their power. Of course, it will take the power from it, and we'll just combine them both together and make it into there. But of course, I'm not going to do that because I don't know whose power it is. It might be tainted. Um, and of course, we could send. If we wanted to. We could send power back out to that. So you can have input and power output, or just input and just output. And that applies for all of the um, items, liquids. Now to delete the, the channel, if you've made it wrong, click on your channel, click the delete channel. So for example, we made that there, and we made it public. So now of course you could use it if you wanted to, you could send the stuff from it. Um, but oh, no, we got that wrong, hit the delete channel, and of course it will just delete it from the whole system. It also deletes it from the send queue and the receive queue on any of the machines that are using it. So it's quite a cool little device by itself. It does have some limitations such as the amount of power it can send and it's not it's not quick on how fast it receives items. Um, well there you go, see it's already, already pulled all the items in from there. Um, so I'll go down and pull some another one of the things off. Okay, so I think that's gonna do the episode here. We've managed to fix an issue and in between episodes I'll probably set up some more of these around the various clouds so that we can keep power into the machines without having the cables going everywhere. Unfortunately I probably possibly won't get out the next episode on my Wednesday uh, just because of the internet issues I think earlier I haven't been able to have the time to record both episodes like I normally do. But if you've enjoyed the episode please do leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel and want to be notified when there's new content, hit that subscribe button. If you've got any questions, comments, suggestions, or just want to say hi, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to go check out the other YouTubers on the server. But otherwise, have a great day, and see ya!